All right, now I'm going to install the AWS plugin for Eclipse, which I haven't done yet, so um, we're doing this together. <laughs> uh, so I found there's a website out there where the AWS Eclipse plugin is. Um, if you go to aws.amazon.com forward slash Eclipse, it says install this toolkit, open help, install new software, in other words, launch Eclipse. And um, I have Eclipse Kepler, which is, a, that's a newer version. That's like, uh, that's the 2013 December version. I'm not going to download another version. It's not Juno, it's it's the J2EE version of Eclipse. <coughs> Give it a second. So while I'm, while I'm waiting for that to start, it's going to ask me to enter a URL in. I'm not going to change the workspace. Let me put this on my clipboard because I know it's going to ask me anyway. All right, let's go back to Kepler. Yikes. Still doing its thing. Open help, install new software. Enter AWS Eclipse into the text box, work with. All right, let's go to help, install new software. work with I've got entirely too many things running on my machine <laughs> there we go it doesn't like that space at the beginning I'm sure let me take that space out give it a return goes out and look for things it is going to find that EWS I think it's asking for Eclipse version 3.6 or later. Um, this is definitely 3.6 or later. It's only a month old. Did I miss anything? It says... Yeah. Yep, that's what I want. Work with. There it is. Okay. Looks good to me. Select all. Click next. This is like a one for one matching of what was in, except for the Java stuff, what was in. Um, there's the Elastic Beanstalk. There's Eclipse Core. RDS I saw was there. Cool. I'm surprised I don't have to give my uh, my OK. There, yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm using Tomcat for Eclipse. I'm hoping that this isn't going to retrograde or something like that, my, my Tomcat. This is doing its thing. Pretty cool. I tell you, man, they, they made these things so much easier to do. <laughs> I hate to be uh, hate to be negative, but the oldies used to be not just click this button and it installs. Okay, so it's doing its thing. You installed software that contains unsigned content. Okay, hopefully Amazon's not going to jam it with a virus. I assume that they're not. You got to watch the unsigned content stuff. Um, once it installs software on your machine, there's bars. They can pretty much do whatever those drawers are going to do. It says it's going to uh, Eclipse needs to restart, which I expected. So it's going to restart. So while well, that's restarting, I'd say if this is as easy as the as the toolkit was for um, .NET, I think you're going to be pretty pleased. It really is like right click and it's deployed. So easy. My guess is this that the Eclipse. I'm sorry, the uh, AWS stuff is going to show up in a perspective. In in Studio, it shows up in... Um, let's go back over to Studio. In Studio, it shows up under your view. And the, the views are sort of like the the perspective in jo in, um, in Eclipse. Oh, and by the way, the um, I had an, another application open uh, before 
the vault no i'm sorry the uh one of these guys either the new servers or the the new servers i think it was and i couldn't I couldn't figure out how to deploy. In other words, I right-clicked that I didn't see the published AWS. It's because it was a class project. It was a console project, not a web project. So you have to have um, the SDKs running up. You have to have a web project to deploy to the web. Makes sense, right? So you can't deploy a class project. Let's see what what I'm talking about. If I go out, the class library, I wasn't thinking. So that, um, that class library is, has two projects under it. It has a a set of class libraries, like a sort of like a data access layer, but just a data layer, an object layer, and has a presentation layer. Uh, yeah, I'm running too many things. And the presentation layer is just a console application. So the the EWS is smart enough to know that this is a console app, and it's not going to do anything. Sorry, I paused it. It's not going to do anything with the console app and Beanstalk. Um, let me pause this for a second. I have my access ID and my key ID. I don't want to give it out on the web. Let me pause. I'm going to, I'm just going to enter my two things in and click finish and it should do the rest. So I'll pause for one second. Sure enough, I came back. <laughs> I was in, uh, in, um, what do you call it? my email and I had my stupid key in there. So I, <laughs> I did edit the video a little bit. Anyway, so after I keyed in my access ID, um, and when you key in your access code, it's going to go and do some work. It's connecting to Amazon and pulling down settings that I have set up on Beanstalk and all kinds of cool, other cool stuff. So the um, this this may run a few minutes. I, I don't even know how long this is going to run. Probably five minutes. And I'm not going to hold you hostage through all that time. So again, my, my guess is once this comes back, I'll see a different perspective if I go to load perspectives up here. Uh, for AWS, I won't know until I see it. So my my guess would be it would be a perspective. If not, it's going to be like a project setting. Um, we'll 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 explore that in a bit. In the meantime, that's pretty much all you have to do to install the AWS SDK for Eclipse. Thank you. See you soon, and we'll walk through um, a quick push on uh, on the next video. Thank you.